Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Emmanuel Avina, who's the president of Avina Financial Group, and we're going to be talking about how to use life insurance for retirement planning. Emmanuel, welcome back to the program. Hey, Mike. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You are welcome, and I love this topic because I find that sometimes people hear one thing and they're like, hold up, retirement planning I get, but using life insurance for retirement planning. So I want to dive into that because I know that a lot of people um, have some preconceived misconceptions about the term life insurance. So bring us up to speed. Uh, What are some of the things that you work with your clients on when you're helping them plan for retirement using life insurance? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, one of the things is, you know, trying to get over that hurdle or, or misconception of life insurance and, and its value that it can bring. And so, you know, really how we look at things is we really try to look at four different quadrants, if you will, with any particular client. So we're looking at, at cash reserves, we're looking at assets, we're looking at taxes, and we're looking at insurance. All four of those essentially make a good and sound financial plan. And so, Uh, The reason why I bring that up is that if you're missing any one of those components or any one of those components are are not properly planned for, then ultimately it can have a negative impact on your retirement. And so it's important that each one of those quadrants, each one of those uh, boxes are checked as you're doing your retirement planning. And a very interesting tool that can be used is life insurance. Most people understand it as sort of, instead of life insurance, it's death insurance, right? When I pass away, that money is going to go to my beneficiaries. But the reality is probably in the last 15 to 20 years, there's been some really great life insurance uh, products that have come out that uh, can really be utilized as an effective retirement income tool. Uh, which is really, really important. And so those are the conversations that we're having with with clients and then really sort of driving down deep in, in terms of how it can impact and be beneficial for them to to consider that in their in their overall retirement plan. Yeah, I, I really think that that's a huge point that you bring up in, in when you described, you know, um, all the different uh, varieties of areas you look in in a client's wealth that could impact things positively or negatively you know your income your taxes that could go that could be a hole in the bucket is you know taxes Mm -hmm. you can eliminate it but you can you know mitigate it to make sure that you're in the best tax situation and you know you don't think things are going to happen to you until it they do and so having those (laughs) contingencies in place and that um insurance insurance with the death benefit but i love your point that you're bringing up you know, it really is life insurance. It's not death mm-hmm. insurance. It's there's some benefits that will b- be brought to someone in the living year. So talk a little bit about um, some of those things that people might not be thinking about where um, where you're going to get some benefits while you're still alive in using a, a good life insurance policy. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple of ways that they can be uh, life insurance policies can be used to give you benefits while you're living. Uh, we won't probably go into too much detail, but just on a very high level, um, there are what are called living benefits. These are benefits that are written into the life insurance policy that will benefit you while you are living. Uh, these can be things like a chronic care rider or long-term care rider that will allow you to access the death benefit early to pay for uh, medical expenses or um, uh, nursing home care, things of that nature. And so it, it, it gives that life insurance policy, instead of it having one person, uh, one purpose, it allows it to have a second purpose and, and protect another area of your financial or retirement life that you may be looking to protect. And so that's a living benefit that helps you while you're living. Now, in addition to that, there's the ability to draw income 
uh, from the cash value of these cash value life insurance policies. And there's a couple of uh, real big benefits to that. Uh, number one is if they're drawn up properly and designed properly, um, you can create a pretty steady stream of income throughout your retirement. And the way that we design them is, is that income, uh, again, if designed properly, is tax-free income. In other words, that money is coming back to you and you're creating a tax-free income stream, which is something that is really, really important when you're looking at um, retirement planning because ultimately people generally are looking at, well, what are my expenses and then how do I meet that expense? But they don't factor in taxes and they don't factor in, well, if I stack a bunch of taxable income on now I'm um maybe I'm not in a lower tax bracket in retirement maybe I'm even in the same or higher and so there's can be some negative ra uh, ramifications of that so with some proper planning you can create some tax free income using the cash value from a life insurance policy now you know how a lot of times um when you're hearing things uh on TV or radio and you're like well the fine print is or you know you need to consult with your tax it you just confidently said the words tax free and i mm -hmm. think that's really curious and i want to clarify that because i think a lot of people think well you know i want to be um tax efficient with my savings i want to make sure mm -hmm. that i'm doing the most important and 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 maybe it's like well here's a vehicle that i've read about somewhere that is tax favored well, you're saying mm -hmm. a life insurance policy, when properly set up, can give you tax-free growth. That's that's mm -hmm. a strong um, benefit for this type of vehicle. Yeah, hundred percent. I, you know, the reality is they're designed in such a way that. Uh, there are provisions that are written into life insurance policies that allow for you to uh, essentially you are accessing a portion of the death benefit early. Mm -hmm. So as an example, if that death benefit is uh, 500000 to use a round figure, uh, you are able to essentially uh, borrow from your cash value and allow that money to come back. And that money or that money that you have withdrawn does not necessarily need to be paid back. And what will happen is it will lower the uh, potential death benefit that is uh, mm -hmm. paid out to any beneficiaries. So not to get too deep into the woods, but yeah. that's sort of the mechanics behind it. And again, it's all about proper planning. It's about finding yes. uh, that advisor and that and that uh, that that guide, if you will, for your retirement to design it properly and go through and really explain it in a simple way to say. You know, if we design this properly, you know, you'll be able to get X amount of dollars from here on a tax-free basis and share with you all of the um, circumstances in which that is, uh, can be a, a realistic possibility for them. So that's the important thing is yeah. find the trusted advisor and then design the plan appropriately. Make sure it's somebody that has done this before and has the uh, expertise and experience at uh, designing the plans appropriately. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I think that you know, some the worst thing in the world is to go, oh, I heard this, so I'm going to go click, 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 set this up, and it's like, no, yeah. no, no, you you needed to do this first or do it this way. And so that's a really big point. Is you know, many times, um, you know, there are and like we talked about when we connected last time about social social security, um, when you make a uh, uh, allocation for your social security, it's irrevocable. So, you know, mm -hmm. you need to plan up front and have someone guide you. Well, in this case, there's some wonderful upsides, but you got to make, make sure there's some, some great decisions in setting it up. And it makes me think when you, when you said living benefits, I, you know, I love the idea that you gave these two aspects. Number one, when you fund it, there is some cash value that grows tax free. That's great. And then also, if there was an event where you needed to access the death benefit early while you're alive, like if you had heart attack, cancer, that kind of thing, there's some provisions that could be set up in there so that you could take advantage of that. Those are really big um, points for people to keep in mind. But makes me think when I hear living benefit, well, how about this? I've got living expenses. And, you know, um, you and I have been talking about our families and it's like, you know, what? you've got college and mm -hmm. college cost a buck or two. And so talk a little bit about if there's an opportunity to use this vehicle 
to help out with that living benefit? Can you help fund college with this type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, in addition to, uh, you know, retirement or using life insurance as a retirement planning tool, it can absolutely be used as a college planning tool. And it, it, it kind of has a double benefit in that uh, not only can you access cash value to help uh, pay for college tuition, but uh, when you complete what's called uh, a FAFSA, which is uh, the form that you have to complete, it's a federal form that you complete in order to see if uh, you can receive any financial aid. Um, when you have funds that are allocated to a life insurance policy, that cash value in that life insurance policy is not counted on the FAFSA. Hmm. And what that means is it's not it doesn't impact your expected family contribution, EFC. Anybody who's had a kid in college knows that term, expected family contribution, and probably knows the term FAFSA because they've had to fill one out to see if they can get financial aid. And so absolutely, you can use it as a college planning tool. And it has a double benefit in that anything that's built up in there is not going to count against um, the EFC or the expected family contribution, whereas a traditional in, uh, investment account, as you will, uh, has to be disclosed on the FAFSA and can uh, impact the expected family contribution, which means uh, you will receive less financial aid in most cases. Yeah, yeah. That's, a really good, that's a really good point to think about because – I think a lot of people are like, I have no clue. And if mm -hmm. this life insurance has these other benefits and it also couldn't help now shield is, you know, shield is the word I'm thinking of, but it's shielding in a positive way, a legal way. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, hiding, it's shielding, mm -hmm. it's protecting some of your assets in this vehicle so that the EFC um, doesn't trigger with that higher number. The EFC, your effective family contribution is showing a lower number because you just scooted some of your funds into this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shelter, I think, is a, is a yeah. term that, that we probably use pretty often in retirement planning. There's, yeah. you know, tax sheltered vehicles, and this would be one that is sort of FAFSA sheltered in that you can build it up and it's, it's not going to count against or penalize you for having that savings. And so, again, with proper planning, uh, the cash value of a life insurance policy can certainly um, benefit you in your college planning. So you can start when your kids are younger. You can start when your kids are a little bit older. Um, it, so it's it's a valuable tool that should be looked at. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And then like you were saying a second ago about um, accessing the cash accumulation in the contract or the life insurance contract, if you've set it up soon, you know, far enough ahead of when you need college, maybe that's another way that you can tap into it instead of borrowing against whatever, you know, bank or Sally Mae or whatever. If you've got it in your account or in your life insurance contract, you can then borrow against that um, while mm -hmm. still it's shielding and protecting then that EFC too. Yeah, 100%. You know, with anything, uh, any financial related planning, the earlier you get started, the more beneficial uh, it is going to be for you. And so life insurance is no different. The earlier that you start the planning, the better. It gives more time for compound interest. It allows you to build up more savings in there. And all of those re for all of those reasons, it makes sense to start your planning as early as possible. Um, and absolutely, the, the, the bigger that that, that that cash value is able to accumulate, that means you're maybe not needing as much financial aid. You're not needing student loans. I mean, gosh, you can't turn on the internet without hearing, yeah. uh, you know, how much student loan is out there. And yeah. so uh, this is a way to sort of fight that on your own. If with just some proper planning, uh, it can really uh, benefit and help uh, your child uh, with college. And, for sure. Uh, and and then it college. would keep you from having to tap into maybe some of your other retirement accounts that are out there. So then that preserves your retirement planning for your wealth building. So that's great. And and it kind of makes me think, too, when you're th when we're talking about taking care of our family, our kids, that mm -hmm. that really uh, the word legacy pops into my mind. And it's like, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm making sure as much as possible that my kids don't have that huge, huge, you know, student loan debt like you just 
just mentioned. Well, when you think about legacy and you go, okay, at the end of the, the timeline when we're kind of looking forward and I want to pass along or transfer my wealth to my family, doesn't that have an, doesn't this kind of um, planning with, with the life insurance have some benefit that way? Because you, you already mentioned tax free. Well, what other options um, does that help you when you're trying to transfer your wealth to, to your family to create that family legacy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, at, under current tax law, uh, death benefits from a life insurance policy transfer to beneficiaries completely tax free. <laughs> and so uh, that's a, a very effective way to transfer wealth from yourself to a uh, beneficiary is, is, is life insurance. So um, that's just another kind of arrow in the quiver, if you will, of how life insurance can be used. You know, when you think of, as an example, a, a traditional retirement account, a 401k or an IRA or 457, you know, whatever alphabet soup you want to look at, that most of those accounts were done on a pre-tax basis. Mm-hmm. So upon your passing, they are then passed on to your beneficiaries and under current law, you have 10 years unless you're a spouse. If it's if, if the beneficiary is not a spouse, they have 10 years to withdraw those funds, and it will be taxable to them as ordinary income. Because so, the government and, needs to get their tax money at yeah, some point. Oh yeah, and you didn't pay that's it when right. it went in because it was pre-tax. So that's a really good uh, that's a really good point. Yeah, what, I mean, 100 percent is it, they, they want to get their their taxes. And so, I mean, I've seen situations in which, you know, there's there's, uh, you know, children that are earning a good income. They're in a high tax bracket and suddenly they receive this inheritance. And now there's a tax bill associated with it yeah. that I'm certain, you know, the the parents would have uh, liked to have avoided. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, had they started planning earlier, you know, we've seen cases like that, uh, you know, where our clients are inheriting, you know, maybe a, a parent's estate or, or IRA or 401k, and now it's sort of created some issues there. So I think life insurance helps with that to transfer. sort of transfer. And you said the death benefit, benefit transfers tax-free. What about the accumulated cash inside of it? Because we've talked about that too. Is Does that transfer as part of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it's about how the plan is designed, but you can design the, the life insurance policy to include the initial death benefit plus cash value. So just as an example, if you were to say that death, the original death benefit is 250,000, the cash value is now also 250,000. As an example, the total amount paid out to a beneficiary could be five hundred thousand dollars it would be the death benefit plus the plus cash, cash value that would be payable yeah. to a beneficiary wow. so i think that's yeah, the thing I mean, that's, that people don't th- you know they, you hear about you know hey i went on a game show and won a car and then they pull the car up and then here comes the tax bill it's like what yeah. i don't you know it's, it, I, I won this well the same with what you said about maybe that inheritance in a 401k or something where you know there's such a need for talking with financial professionals to go, now what? You know, I've got to pay taxes on this and how do I access? Mm-hmm. But if you're thinking ahead and you're, and you're wanting to give the gift of legacy to your family, structuring some things like this so that they don't have that burden is huge. It kind of makes me think, you know, these are the kind of things that, you know, you hear the ultra wealthy and rich, you know, have all these fancy strategies to avoid taxes. Well, this it's got to be one of them that uh, helps people, you know, that if you're ultra rich, yeah, uh, that's that's available, but you don't need to be ultra rich to do this. The, the common, you know, person can do these kinds of strategies easily. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, again, I think, you, you know, you'll often see that uh, wealthy people are very well insured. Mm. Uh, some of the wealthiest people that you would think, well, why do they have insurance? You know, they already have so much in assets, whether it be real estate or their investments. But the reality is uh, they understand the benefit of life insurance, right? And and they understand the benefit of having a tax preferred uh, asset. And so that's what life insurance really is. It allows you to um, save funds and do so in a tax favored way. And so that's why life insurance is very, very popular amongst uh, 
in my experience, from what I have seen uh, yeah. amongst some of the wealthiest people that I know. And, and there's a lot of, um, I've, I've heard um, examples where people are like, oh, well, you have to have whatever, a million dollars in, in uh, liquidity to be able to do this kind of program and that kind of investment. And with the life insurance, that's not the case. You, there's no limitations. You can set up uh, one of these without being ultra wealthy. So I think that's a huge thing for people to think about. And also, when you think about, uh, well, this just sounds just too good to be true. Well, this has been around for hundreds of years. In fact, isn't it true that um, banks and big corporations, they put their money in life insurance? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. Is is life insurance has been around for uh, an extremely long time, and you know, in 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 addition to that, it it is something that can be used, uh, not necessarily by just the one percent, but can be used again if structured properly uh, can be used by somebody that wants to save, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month, you know, uh, $500 a month, something of that nature. Um, you can uh, really you start with something like that uh, and really build up a good cash value if uh, given enough time. And so I think that that's, uh, that's the attractive part to it. Again, in and of itself, it is, you know, life insurance is not, uh, the only thing that can get you to have a comfortable retirement, and I share that with my clients. However, it is a it can be an important component, and it should be looked at. Um, obviously, there's there's qualification. You have to be in relatively good health and things of that nature in order to qualify for it. Um, but the reality is, is that if you can uh, jump that little hurdle, uh, there are a lot of benefits that can be found in life insurance that cannot be found in many other asset classes. Yeah, I, I just am so intrigued with with all of these benefits. And so I think probably just at this point, someone's probably going, okay, help me understand how this can benefit me. So let's just wrap up with this, Emmanuel. What's the best way someone could uh, reach out? connect with you and even learn more about how this could uh, help their financial situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that the two easiest ways is I'll provide the, the office phone number, which is five, six, two, four, six, four, three, nine, seven, three. Um, and easily can set up a consultation and answer any questions that you may have. And then obviously if you go to our website, you'll be able to find all of our socials and all of our ways to interact with us. So, but that website is www.avina, F as in financial, G as in group.com. So that's Avina fg.com uh, and you'll be able again to find out all the different ways that you can interact with us and material that we have on this topic amongst uh, a plethora of other financial topics and retirement planning topics as well excellent well Emmanuel thank you so much for coming on today it was a real pleasure having you having you on the show and talking yeah it's always good to catch up with you Mike appreciate it thanks for having me You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.